Johnny Cash has been shot in the <laughs> Oh, don't worry. He didn't lose any blood. Just a lot of, um, water. Listen, I'll tell you, once the news started flowing about this, I had the strongest urge to get it all out to you. <laughs> On May 10th, 2022, in the birthplace of country music legend Johnny Cash, which is Kingsland, Arkansas, the silhouette of the man in black was shot in a very, um, compromising location. <laughs> the silhouette was painted on the town's water tower, leading to a very curious leak. Now, in a town of a little over 500 people, this may just seem like some small town mischief, but recently, Timothy Sled found himself on trial, not for one, but for two felony charges. How did this seemingly petty, yet hilarious crime escalate to such a degree? Well, for starters, because the shot caused the country music star to pee for over a week. A week? Time to get that prostate examined, am I right? Now, let's break down Sled's charges, the trial, and the verdict. Hey, I'm Josh Sanford, I'm America's attorney, and I'm here to tell you the rules of the game. And really, what more important rules are there than to tell you the rules about shooting the of country music stars? This crime made national news when it occurred in 2022 due to the surgical precision of the shot in question. But despite the publicity that gushed from the incident, a crime is still a crime or two crimes. Cause after an investigation in which authorities reviewed and absorbed some local surveillance footage, Timothy Sled was arrested and charged with criminal mischief and impairing the operation of a vital public utility. Criminal mischief sounds like something kids would do, right? Mm. It's actually a class D felony, which means a conviction for that crime could include prison time of up to six years. That seems like a lot for a prank, right? Well, not exactly, because the possible imprisonment for the public utility vandalism is up to 10 years. That's a class C felony, a total of 16 years. For SLED, for this trial, the stakes were very, very high. The pressure was on. Trial for the incident began and ended last week with the defense claiming that SLED had erroneously confessed in an attempt to protect the actual shooter and that the water supply hadn't been severely impaired or interrupted. This was reinforced by the testimony of the first witness, the town water operator at the time of the shooting, who proved that while the water tower had to be shut down, there was no loss of potable water because they were able to bypass the tower and use well pumps. The former mayor of Kingsland was also called to the stand to present to the jury the extent of the financial costs that SLED's stunt had on the city. A billing statement for repairs to patch the water hole showed a total of $5,500. Now, the city itself only paid $1,000 thanks to an insurance deductible. But this in no way helps Sled's case, however, because the monetary statute for a crime becoming a felony in a criminal mischief case is exactly $1,000. Moreover, if the insurance paid that money, then the insurance company is out the difference between the $1,000 and the $5,500, which means hmm, that defense doesn't really work. A deputy sheriff took the stand to give details on the investigation and how they came to suspect Timothy Sled. Apparently, two men had seen a gray Dodge Charger in that area just before hearing a shot fired. When cops received the information, they asked the local Baptist church for their security surveillance footage and they saw the vehicle around the same time that the shot was reported. The gray Charger seen in the surveillance footage does in fact belong to Mr. Sled. That fact stained his defense. Both the lead investigator and the county sheriff were also called to the stand as they were both present for SLED's interview in which he fully confessed. Lead investigator Trey Gerard said he was adamant that he committed the act. I've interviewed a lot of people in my career and I believe what he told me. The rifle supposedly used in the incident was also recovered, although the defense maintained that there were no ballistics tests done on the gun for verification. Wow. Despite the defense's best efforts, the jury apparently really, really had to go because they set a speed record for deliberation time and ruled Timothy Sled guilty after seven minutes. Seven minutes! What? Just for some perspective, jurors often deliberate for days, an hour. An hour is actually an amazingly 
short amount of time. I mean, most juries would struggle to even pick a four person in seven minutes, much less take an initial poll and even begin a discussion. It must have been in that room, a slam dunk. And honestly, an uncoerced confession usually is a slam dunk. And then when you combine that with the video footage and a matching gun, still, <laughs> seven minutes is less time than it takes to watch this video. It's bonkers. Now, as a reward for the conviction, SLED received the minimum sentence for both counts, which was $5,000 for each, and another $5,000 in restitution. He was also charged with $500 of court costs, bringing his total charge to $15,500. The judge gave SLED the option to pay the fines or to take jail time. SLED chose to pay. Now, that's a smart move, and I doubt that when he was presented with the option, he really seriously tried to hold it in. But here's a crazy fact. SLED had been offered a plea deal to plead guilty and only pay $5,500 in restitution along with three years on probation. But he didn't accept that offer because he believed he would lose his job if he pled guilty. Well, now he's a felon on two counts and he's paying three times the amount of money he'd have to pay under the proposed plea. I gotta tell you, refusing to take the offered P deal, oh, I mean plea deal, because it would cost you your job, that's rough. Because he got a $10,000 upcharge. That's gonna give you a burning sensation. Initially, it was his unwillingness to take a plea deal that made me think that perhaps they had the wrong guy. But after all the evidence sprayed all over the courtroom, I think it was more likely just bad lawyering or taking really, really long odds. In any event, he got soaked by the ruling. Let it be known that America's attorney is against vandalism in all its forms. It is not okay. There are serious consequences, but SLED's crime led to a boost in tourism for Kingsland, Arkansas, and national attention that's gotta count for something. And let's face it, it was, it was really pretty funny. I mean, how can you top making Johnny Cash pee all over a town for a week? Now, if you've heard of a crime that's funnier than that and it didn't hurt anybody, I want to hear about it in the comments. And don't forget to drop your pro se opinion down there if you think Sled's punishment was too harsh or too lenient. Was it worth it? <laughs> Let me know what you think down below. And don't forget to lawyer up and hit the subscribe button. I will be back actually very soon with more videos. Peace out, friends.